Think of the hardest game you have ever played. Is it Alien Isolation on Nightmare Mode? Or is it the taco recipe from Cooking Mama on the Wii? If there's one thing we know about the Resident Evil franchise, it's that the games are never truly that difficult, unless you work for IGN of course, and when it comes to speedrunning them, most of them are just straight up running simulators with the majority of fights being completely avoidable, so you probably couldn't name drop any Resident Evil game as being one of the hardest games out there. That is, unless you've heard of the recently developed Berserker mod for the Resident Evil 4 remake. The Berserker mod genuinely ramps up the difficulty by adding more enemies, making them tougher, and even adding several boss fights throughout the game where you wouldn't normally get them. Get ready. The mod also requires that you have the separate ways DLC because it opens up the map to new areas where you would normally see Ada explore and even introduces the Passanta fight to Leon's story. All in all, the mod allegedly makes Resident Evil 4 Remake very difficult, but at the end of the day, it's still Resident Evil. I mean, with these games, if you wanted to speedrun them at all, you could probably just run past enemies like you normally would, right? I mean, seriously. How hard can it be? There it is. Wow, that's a little bit loud. So if you haven't figured it out by this point, I saw everyone playing this modded version of the game, and I really wanted to try my hand at speedrunning it. Before we get into it, the difficulty we're going to choose is bring them on, or in layman's terms, standard difficulty. This is because the first category you see when you go to the Resident Evil 4 Remake speedrun page is any percent PC standard. Not only that, but I wanted to be able to provide a genuinely interesting video without every other sentence being, and then I died. So Leon must die, or professional difficulty, was completely off the table. But hey, at least I didn't choose assisted, right? So are we good? Should we get a move on? All right. Starting with chapter one, there are a few differences to know almost immediately, with the first one being the Skinado by the shrine, which we're just gonna run past because I mean, it's a speedrun. Entering the cabin, we're greeted with yet another Ganado hiding behind this doorway. Again, we're gonna run past him, but we're also gonna duck into this room very quickly because quite conveniently placed on the bed here is a shotgun. That's right, only two enemies deep were already given a shotgun. If that doesn't set the tone for the rest of the game, I don't know what will. After we've picked up the basement key, we head downstairs and trigger the next cutscene before heading back upstairs again. In a normal playthrough, there would only be one Ganado here blocking the staircase, but because we're playing the Berserker mod, we actually have to dodge and weave our way past the Ganado and Dr. Salvador himself. That's right, they put a chainsaw Ganado at the very start of the game. Anyways, we stun these guys to get past them and head upstairs making sure we don't step in a sneakily placed bear trap along the way. Heading outside, everything is mostly how it should be, if you ignore the merchant that is. So we head over the bridge, through the woods and into the village. Now in a normal speedrun, the village is pretty easy. You kill 8 enemies, drop your frame rate to 30, and throw a grenade to trigger both the bell and the chainsaw cutscene at the same time. However, this isn't a normal speedrun. We don't need to kill 15 enemies to trigger the bell, no no, we need to kill around 30 enemies. <clears throat> so, with some well-timed shotguns to the face and a sniper rifle in hand, we did eventually clear out the village to progress, but I know what you're thinking. If we have the sniper rifle this early, can't we just shoot the bell instead of fighting them? Well, unfortunately, I did try this and I can confirm it doesn't work, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, I'm not surprised the very first battle in the game is unskippable. It completely sets the tone for what you should be expecting, and even though this meant the chapter took longer, I'm kind of glad we can't cheese past it. Heading to the farm, we come to find that the wooden gear isn't sitting inside the barn anymore, and is instead being held by an unarmed brute, which means that we're faced with yet another section where we have to actually fight the enemies in order to progress. Fortunately, on my way out of the barn, the brute was actually chasing me, which meant that I could just walk him into this tripwire and give him the kick shotgun knife combo before picking up the gear and putting it in place. After crossing the bridge, instead of turning right to push this old timey wagon out of the way, we're gonna head straight through these doors to this cabin. Normally these doors are sealed shut until the fight with Luis, but since this is one of the buildings that Ada can explore in separate ways, it's actually open for us this time. Better yet, there's a TMP waiting for us upstairs, so we grab that and return to the usual route. In this tunnel here, there was a sneakily placed tripwire which we had to shoot to get through but then everything was smooth sailing until we finally got to the end of the chapter. Normally, we can just remove these boards and drop down into the basement to rescue Luis and end the chapter, but this time Luis is being guarded by a very scary chainsaw sister. Since there's a ladder here, we can just shoot her once to make her chase us and then climb back up, so that while she's climbing up to chase us, 
We can drop down and end the chapter without a fight. The total playtime for this chapter was 13 minutes and 14 seconds, which is already almost 7 minutes slower than my personal best on a non-modded playthrough. It was at this moment it dawned on me just how long this speedrun was going to take. At the start of chapter 2, pretty much everything was the same, we just made our way to the Valve to open this door, got our gear, and headed through to Dynamite Valley. Dynamite Valley itself was the same idea, except now there were way more enemies and almost all of them had dynamite, which is fair enough. Not only that, but there were two enemies with rocket launchers way up on these platforms, so we had to make sure they were dealt with to avoid being completely obliterated. No! No! No 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 no! The best way I found to handle this section without being completely overrun or blown to pieces was to tuck myself into this little room and shoot anything that came near the window or the door. After a while, I was able to take out the second rocket launcher and make my way back up to the valve to open the gate. Then, I proceeded to the emblem door through the next area and up towards Mendez's manor. Normally, there would be a chainsaw ganado here trying to block the path, but it seemed as though this enemy had been removed for some reason. I thought it was really generous to remove the enemy until I realized that the crystal marble we needed to end the chapter wasn't inside this cabinet like it normally is, and was instead being held by the chainsaw ganado that has now seemingly spawned alongside Mendez himself and a second chainsaw ganado. How didn't I see this coming? <laughs> now, we're actually pretty lucky here because we have a ton of space to run around the manor and make these guys chase us. Not only that, but we don't need to kill both of the ganados or do anything with Mendez, we just need to kill Dr. Salvador because he's the ganado holding the crystal marble. So, with a few grenades, rifle shots, and a shotgun to the knee, and obviously a big whack on the back of Leon's head, we got the crystal marble, headed upstairs, and grabbed the gate key to end the chapter with a time of 12 minutes and 31 seconds. This puts our overall time so far at 25 minutes 45 seconds. That, in comparison to the 11 minutes 31 seconds I would be at in a normal speedrun, is crazy. Chapter 3 was a big turning point in gameplay because heading back into the village, instead of being able to head straight to the town hall, we were completely blocked off and forced to fight the boss from Ada's story, the Santa. It's locked? Oh, what the fuck? As it turns out, it was really easy to stun this guy using the TMP as opposed to the other guns, so my strat for this fight was to just spray him with the TMP in the face, kick him, rinse, and repeat. Later on into the fight, two brutes would show up with big hammer things, but instead of fighting these guys, we can actually use them to damage Pasanta, and at the very end of the fight, this guy actually got the final blow and ended the fight for me. Ow. Wait, he did it for me. Once the fight was over, this underground tunnel opened up and there was a laser maze for some reason. But once we crawled through that, we got into the town hall and made our way up to the church. There was a brute here, but that wasn't a problem at all. We just ran past him. The real challenge here was when we got to the fishing village. This place was absolutely swarming with enemies and I was completely out of herbs. In speedrun fashion though, I ran past all of the enemies, grabbed the gas canister, and made my way up the ladder. On my way out, there were quite a few enemies, including a crossbow brute, who was very, very close to absolutely rocking my shit, but I escaped by the skin of my teeth and healed up with these green herbs before starting the Del Lagos fight. Now, when I say I was expecting this fight to be really tough, I thought I was going to be stuck at this section for ages. I thought it was going to be 10 times harder than it normally is. So I started throwing harpoons as fast as I could. And after five harpoons, it just died. I don't know if this was intentional or if I'd run into some weird bug or what, but five harpoons and it was over. I mean, listen to my confusion in the moment. Why was that so fast? Why, did, why was that over so fast? That doesn't normally happen. Why was that so fast? I'm really, I'm confused, but I'm also scared because I, I have a feeling he's probably going to come back for the next section, right? Like, oh no, the next chapter is going to be so hard. Anyways, wrapping up chapter three with a 1042, we were now at 36 minutes, 27 seconds for the run, where we would typically be at around the 18 minute mark if playing unmodded. Chapter four was pretty smooth sailing from the start. We were kindly given a case upgrade wing right next to the police officer's hat, and then we made our way to the boat to begin the actual smooth sailing. Off the bat, I wanted to grab the long kabas over here to sell to the merchant, and I also wanted to grab some eggs from the chickens. Unfortunately, the golden egg wasn't here anymore, which didn't surprise me, but we did grab some regular eggs to heal ourselves with should we need to. So, the puzzles to get the head statues were all the same, meaning I could just quickly pop them in since I knew them by memory, but as soon as I picked this one up, two chainsaw ganados would spawn right outside. So I knew I had to run as quick as I could to get away from them without getting hit. Heading back to grab the second head, I stopped at the boat in the middle of the river and quickly grabbed this treasure, 
for getting back in the boat because I really didn't want to fight this guy. It just didn't seem worth it. Then we arrived at the dock here and again there were so many enemies but we literally just ran past every single one of them just like we would in a regular speedrun. Unlike a regular speedrun though, there was a brute trying to guard this head who kicked me in the damn stomach. So we squeezed past him to grab the head and made our way back to the boat so that we could retrieve the church insignia. Before we made our way back to the church though, we bought the broken butterfly because it was on special offer and we knew we would need it later on. Then we increased the power on our rifle just once to pack a bit more punch behind it. Up next was the Gigante fight which was fairly straight forward when it came to fighting Gigante himself, but we did have to take care of these dogs first as well as some Ganados. Once they were taken care of though, we spammed Gigante with bullets and even had a bit of support from the dog we saved in the previous chapter. Eventually, we knocked him down and carried on to the church. Once we arrived at the church, we got ambushed by Krauser, which was on one hand really cool, but on the other hand, it was just super random. We just did the usual stabbing, kicking and so on until eventually he flashbanged me and shoved my face into his crotch before disappearing into the walls, I guess. Anyways, we cracked the puzzle, headed up the stairs to find Ashley and got our final time for the chapter, 14 minutes and one second. Normally this chapter would only take around eight minutes, so you can really get an idea for how the increase in enemies and their strength affects how quickly we can speed on this game. Kicking off chapter five, I had a really horrible feeling in my stomach and funnily enough, that horrible feeling had a name, Ashley Graham. <laughs> Whenever I've speedrun this game in the past, Ashley has always been the deciding factor on whether or not a run can continue because she's just such a liability. So adding this mod on top made the possibility of her ruining the run even greater. Regardless, we head out to the front of the church where there were so many enemies and with a quick flashbang, we were able to breeze past all of them. Once I realized Ashley was still with me by this point, I breathed a sigh of relief and headed into the village. The village was a little bit less stressful than the church because if Ashley gets grabbed here, we can restart at the next checkpoint to bring her back. So heading to the farm, we load a checkpoint and the same applies to the cabin. We load the checkpoint if she gets grabbed before heading into the cabin. The cabin section itself was tough to say the least. The mod basically just multiplied the number of enemies by like 10. So straight off the bat, we got to shooting and this whole section it's not really interesting to look at or discuss because it was literally just a load of shooting. If the enemies got close, we would use a shotgun. If they were far away, we would try to use the rifle, etc, etc. That being said, there were three chainsaw ganados total, which we did end up killing with the broken butterfly because we had to run down the clock and kill as many enemies as possible so that Ashley could save us. And doing all that with three chainsaw ganados and a brute chasing you just wouldn't be possible. So we managed to kill all three of them as well as the brute and we get our end of chapter summary which shows a very impressive 8 minutes 56 seconds which I don't believe is very far off of the time I would typically get speedrunning this chapter on modded. We start off chapter 6 with a bang. A flashbang, that is, because there were too many enemies here and I needed Ashley not to die. After the big bang, we broke this lock on the gate to get quick access into the house and prepared to fight the Bella sisters. My strategy for taking them down and grabbing the crank quickly was to throw a heavy grenade at their feet, drill the one on the right with the broken butterfly and drop a flashbang so that I could grab the crank and get out of there quickly. With the crank in hand, I headed to the gate and dropped another flashbang so that I could open the gate safely and make my way through. After a quick checkpoint restart, Ashley was with me for our escape from Mendez where we would stun these ganados so they couldn't grab her and shoot this barrel to clear the way ahead. Crossing the bridge and heading into the barn, we were faced with the Mendez fight, which was now accompanied by two brutes and some Ganados. First things first, we did as much damage as we could to get phase one of the fight out of the way, and straight into phase two, we got stun locked by Mendez, Fire, the Brute, and a Ganado. And just as we were about to get a boot to the face to finish us off, we just about managed to restore our health. I see a boot coming to my face. The Brutes and Ganados were becoming a clear problem, so I focused on getting rid of them next, and once they were all gone, it was time to focus on Mendez. This guy had way more health than usual, and to be honest, although the mod was supposed to make this game harder than ever, it felt like tanky bosses were just a pointless addition. For example, we had the extra enemies to deal with alongside Mendez, and they did genuinely prove challenging, but once they were out of the way, it was just a case of shooting the bullet sponge and it kind of got boring. I did eventually finish him off and as we headed towards the castle, my stomach dropped. Super Salvador was blocking the path and he looked angrier than ever. I mean, surely we couldn't just... Oh, 
so we can. Chapter 6, uh, it was tough, but we cleared it and our time for the chapter here was 13 minutes and 32 seconds, which I was pleased with. Chapter 7 was quite a long one and it all started off with us heading straight into the castle and killing this Plagas. Then we lined up a few shots on these guys and raised the cannon for the next section. In the next section, we basically just killed all of the enemies that were there from the start because I didn't want them bothering us given that we'd be trying to shoot the cannon. And then we destroyed some of the catapults so that they couldn't bother us either. Before we blasted the door open though, we dropped down here so that we could pick up this generously placed stingray and then we got the door open. A few more enemies did spawn so we... There was also a group of enemies waiting for us inside, but I took care of them pretty easily too. It was at this point I decided to upgrade the Stingray a little bit, since I knew we would come across the Gyarados soon, and we kicked off the next big fight with an unskippable Verdugo. Oh shit! We gotta go Ashley, we gotta go. You can't cheese this one by sending Ashley over the wall like you can in an unmodded speedrun. You have to kill the Verdugo. My first attempt at this ended with me dying, and so did the second. No, 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 no! but by the third, I managed to get him stuck between this pillar and the merchant, and it didn't seem like he was willing to go around, so I cleaned up the rest of the enemies and got to working on him. You little cunt. Killing the Verdugo seemingly awoke this knight in shining armor, so I took care of him too. Heading down to the dungeons, we were faced with not one, but two Gyarados, both of which needed to be killed in order to progress, because one of them has the key and the other one, well, it's just worth killing them off for the loot, I guess. My plan for these two was to kind of silently dance around them, getting off a quick shot and then moving to another spot before they catch me. Once I was down to just one Gyarados, I spammed him with the Stingray and got a move on. Carrying on, I popped the swords in their respective places to open the door, and in this area we were given the riot gun, so that we could finally get rid of our shitty old shotgun. But next up was probably the most annoying section so far, the water hole. When I tell you I was fearing for my life in this section, it just felt like there were too many enemies to keep Ashley safe while speedrunning through, and that was proven to be true when I almost lost her getting carried away. Come on! Come on! Oh my god, dude, how did every shot miss? Restarting the checkpoint here reset the enemy spawn so that Ashley could come to me without getting picked up, and so we began the next section of the water hall. Usually, this section is fairly simple. You keep Ashley safe while she raises the platform, and occasionally keep yourself safe too. Both of those steps are amped up because there are a ton more enemies and even two Gyarados. Lucky for me, one of the Gyarados got stuck in the lower half of the hall and never showed up, but I still had to dance around one while stopping Ashley from getting picked up. When she did finally raise the platform, these Salazar statues shot up out of the ground and had to be destroyed too. Finally, we made it out to the courtyard to wrap up the chapter with a time of 25 minutes and 32 seconds. A bit on the longer side, but I genuinely couldn't see myself doing it any quicker. I have to apologize for chapter 8 because I accidentally turned up the resolution of the game without adjusting the resolution of the recording, so you kind of just get the top left corner for this whole chapter. Sorry. We started off by going fishing, because there are about 4 fish in this pond, 3 small and 1 big, and we could munch on these to replenish our health instead of using herbs. We then grabbed all of the loot nearby and jumped down to interrupt this weird culty rave. I had to fight my way through the crowd because these guys instantly swarmed me, but once I'd made it up to the DJ's VIP section, I pumped in pool of lead and even took a photo with a fan. With the DJ's lamp in hand, I hit a nasty stage dive and made my way back to open this gate. It was on my way out that I came across the bouncer, who really wasn't pleased with my stage dive. He said it's dangerous, it can hurt people, and that they don't have the insurance to deal with it. So, as you normally do, I shot him in the back of the head with everything I had, and it genuinely took quite a bit of shooting, but he'd locked the door behind him, so when he finally took his helmet off to give me a stern look, I blasted his face off. Moving on, I completed this puzzle as quick as I could. Nothing was different about it at all, but the next section was absolutely crawling with these spider things, so... I had to round them up and take them out all at once. Once they were taken care of, I invested in the merchant's new crypto, GNPD, that's gunpowder if you couldn't tell, 
because I bought loads of it. Why? Well, after hearing the merchant's kind and caring words, Get yourself killed now. <laughs> we can head over to this drawbridge and see the castle is absolutely teeming with enemies and we were going to need to craft a lot of grenades to slip past them. It's worth mentioning that I also bought the hand grenade recipe at this point. Anyways, a quick flashbang to get us through and if we shoot right around here somewhere, we can break the chain on the other side and open this gate. Then another flashbang here followed by a well-placed grenade there and the next gate is opened. Before we drop down to this section, we shoot this sneakily placed bear trap and shoot this guy in the face. Then we climb up and head into the tower to raise the cannon and knock the Gigante down. We wait for what feels like 20 years for the cannon to reload because its reload speed was slowed down for some reason and we knock the door down to proceed. Once we'd gotten past the jump scare section, Leon said his line. Sorry. I've had my fill of you guys. And we ended the chapter with a time of 9 minutes 37 seconds. This was definitely one of the quicker chapters, but it was also very misleading for reasons we would soon discover in the upcoming chapters. In chapter 9, we start off by spotting a mysterious figure dash by the window. Did you see what it was? In the maze area, we climb up to the switch and drop our first of the three flags in order to open the gate. Then, we make our way past these caged dogs and shoot this one in the face. If you're wondering where that flashbang came from, it was Krauser. God knows why, but he's here and he was actually chasing us around the maze just now. We just didn't know it because I'm a god tier speedrunner. Anyways, two flags down, we made our way deeper into the maze, past these dogs too, and we finally came face to face with Krauser who pinned us down and then he just left. Uh, he, he probably just got a bit nervous, it happens to the best of us. These dogs were pestering us whilst we were opening the gate and it turns out Ashley has allergies or something so I had to uh, take care of them. I eventually dropped the third and final flag to open the gate and drop down here. This section was overrun with enemies very quickly but I realized that one of them would carry Ashley towards me if I just waited by these steps so I did exactly that and fought off these enemies whilst waiting. Once we were inside the main hall, we headed straight to the merchant to buy some gunpowder because we were going to need it to make our way through the next sections where we had to collect the statue heads. The first head we tackled was the lion head, which was a very different fight to what you would usually face. Normally, you would be faced with two of these armor guys, but with this mod, collecting the head would trigger an extra one that had a little bit more health and strength than the others. Not only that, but you also need to be careful not to kill the tougher one first, because doing so would then trigger a Garador to spawn which we wanted to delay so that we could get into a good position. Once the Garador spawned, we instantly take it out with the Stingray so that we could focus on fighting the other knights that were now alive, and it was basically just rinse and repeat from there. A second Garador spawned shortly after, but I kinda used that one to deal some damage on the knights whilst also trying to take him out. He did eventually bug out and run into this wall endlessly, which was a bit annoying, but at least it meant we could finish off the fight a bit easier. We also got this charm that we could use to increase our running speed, which would be great for speedrunning, but I'll spoil it now, I completely forgot to put it on, so we won't see me running any faster. Nighty -night. Nights. <laughs> I hate that line. <laughs> I hate it, but it takes everything in me not to say it, you know? Anyways, we opened the gate and headed over to the dining room to get the serpent head. Nothing had changed here at all, it was the exact same puzzle answer. But when we left, something happened. These cultists had appeared around the statue and I had to take care of them before I could get the next one. Otherwise, they would chase us in and overwhelm us. Since there was a red cloaked zealot here, I just did some damage and waited for him to turn these white robe enemies into plaggers so that I could flashbang them and kill them all at once. Then, when he was the last one standing, I pumped him full of bullets before moving on. The final head, the goat's head, wasn't that much different. We just flashbanged the lever guy so that he didn't drop the bridge and grabbed the head. The only difference here is that there were a lot more enemies swarming you on your way back, but that's nothing a quick flashbang couldn't resolve. This chapter was already feeling long and I was super excited for it to be over so I popped the heads onto the center statue and was quickly reminded that this isn't the end of the chapter, we have the entire Ashley section to beat. Thankfully this wasn't different at all, it tried to be a little bit spookier by not giving her a lantern but come on, we already know where we're going. So yeah, nothing to talk about here, we just grabbed the emblem and popped it in the slot to finish the chapter. Our total time for this chapter was 19 minutes 43 seconds which I honestly thought wasn't too slow considering how much we had to do but with the exception of chapter 8 these chapters were really starting to feel like they were getting longer. To start off chapter 10 we were plunged straight into action when we picked back up as Leon by the three headed statue. 
Instead of being able to make our way out off the bat, the door had now been locked again and we were trapped in a very small cage with a Garador. Not only that, but there were 4 crossbow enemies right outside the cage poking at us, so I had to be quick with the Garador. If I positioned myself on the right over here, I was able to immediately put all 6 of my rifle shots into the Garador's back to kill it before it could get to us, then I made my way out to finish off the enemies outside. Heading past the Novistadors and up the stairs into this room, there's a sneakily placed trip wire right after the door which we need to deactivate before we can collect the loot in here and proceed to the Novi room. This room was very different to the original, with the number of Navista doors being about doubled and there were even some Ganados in here too. Regardless of numbers, we brushed past all of them to open the first gate and then crossed to the other side, picking up a herb, a grenade and a ruby on our way before opening the second gate and dropping down to leave. Not before we got a little slap on the back though. Yeah, what a bitch. The double Garador room was up next and it seems Leon has sustained some minor brain damage during his holiday in Spain because he says Great. Two of them. when actually we're going to be facing four of these bad boys. On top of that, there are no key items to collect in order to progress. We just have to kill all four of these Garados. Great. The Garados can't see and only react off sound, so I used the sound of gunfire to lure them towards groups of Ganados so that they could take them out for me without me having to do it myself, potentially exposing my location and getting ripped to shreds. There would be moments where a Ganado would be alone, but I would use them to lure the Garados back, and then I would take my time killing each Garador one by one. If the Garados were ever grouped up, I could just drop a heavy grenade at their feet, and that, more often than not, would kill one of them. Eventually, after silently dancing around, I did manage to work my way down to just one Garador, who faced the wrath of my trusty riot gun before we collected the remaining loot and dove headfirst into darkness for the upcoming cave section. Talk about sticking the landing. During our crawl through the cave, we were greeted by Regenerador, who I would have preferred to ignore and run past, but unfortunately he had some very expensive loot that we really wanted to take, the crown. So I blew him up, I drilled him with bullets, I flashbanged him, I did everything I possibly could, and eventually he handed over the crown and went about his day. In a typical run, this crown would have been sitting with this dead guy, but instead he was holding onto Ada's crossbow. This wasn't great for us though, because it only had one ball and we hadn't collected a single one throughout this whole speedrun. It was effectively useless. Regardless, we carried on into the underground laboratory, where we would store away our useless crossbow and sell all of our jewels and treasures, including the Nabadazzled crown, so that we could finally afford our trusty rocket launcher ahead of the Verdugo fight. Now, the reason I'm buying the rocket launcher here is because we're trying to beat this chapter as quick as we can, so instead of running away from the Verdugo and waiting for the elevator to arrive, we can blast him out of space, collect his treasure and trigger the elevator early. That being said, the Verdugo in this mod is absolutely stacked for health and will absolutely tank the rocket launcher, so we need to do a bit more damage to actually get rid of him. My strategy here was to throw a heavy grenade where he spawns, quickly hit him with the rocket launcher and then do some poke damage to him before he disappears into the tunnels. As the elevator makes its descent, we try our best to avoid all of these newly spawned enemies, including a Regenerador, whilst we get rugby tackled by the Verdugo. He ducks our magnum shots, so we look for some loot to see if we can maybe get lucky and find some more magnum ammo, and at that point the elevator arrives. Now I could absolutely get on the elevator and forget about the fight, but that rocket launcher cost a lot of money, and I want to get my money's worth for sure. So we keep at it, and... I'm dead. Yeah, he chopped my head off. This exact moment was absolutely infuriating. It genuinely pissed me off so much because I could have just gone. I could have accepted my losses, got in the elevator with a good time, and left. But my greed and pride just wouldn't let me. So I pressed continue and tried to beat it again as quick as I could and got pretty much the same result by the dismemberment. I was angry. This mod was really testing my patience, and quite frankly, I was very close to calling it quits here, but I couldn't. I'd made it too far. I just needed to get lucky. So I hit continue, I threw my grenade, and I... He dodged it. He fucking dodged my rocket launcher. And the fact that he could do that is fucking ridiculous, man. Whatever, we have to go again. And again. And it was on this attempt that I finally got the luck that I was waiting for. When I was crafting some magnum ammo, I got a crafting bonus, so I now had 5 magnum bullets, all of which were destined for the Verdugo's stupid little head. The elevator made its way towards me, and after getting smacked into these boxes here, I picked up another 4 magnum bullets. 
more magnum ammo. Wait, I have seven. No, you idiot, you have nine. There was no way I could lose this fight now. So I baited him back to the elevator, tried my hand at getting a shot off, and weirdly enough, three magnum bullets later, he was dead. He's dead? What? What the fuck? I don't know how it happened. I tried this time and time again, putting three or four magnum shots in him at a time. And for some reason on this attempt, he just keeled over and died. I wasn't gonna argue with it though. I got myself into that elevator and even brought a friend with me for the ride. 31 minutes and nine seconds later, I could finally put chapter 10 behind me and forget about it. Surely it couldn't get harder than this, right? Chapter 11 broke me. No, I'm not kidding. I went through all five stages of grief throughout this chapter and let me tell you why. I started by selling my treasures and buying the Killer 7. I did originally want to buy another rocket launcher to clear the boulders and skip the TNT section entirely, but to my surprise, I literally could not buy another rocket launcher. I shouldn't have been so surprised. This was Resident Evil 4's hardest mod yet, but it did catch me off guard and I was kicking myself for buying it at the Vidugo fight. I did also put on the running speed charm finally, so we were a tiny bit faster than usual. Anyways, heading into the mines, I did my best to take care of a couple enemies on the way in so that we had less chance of being overwhelmed, including this brute who took a magnum shot and two shotgun shells, this dynamite guy, and then finally this chainsaw ganado. Once more of the enemies were cleared, a second chainsaw sister spawned, so we had to take care of her too, and this was already starting to take a lot of time. Once all the enemies were cleared, we made our way to the switch so that we could lower the bridge, and... Yep. Super Salvador. Whoa! Why so fast? <sighs> so I did it all again, managing the horde of enemies as fast as I could, taking down chainsaw after chainsaw, and finally I was ready to take on Super Salvador. This time, I was prepared. I started by throwing a grenade off the bat so that these ganados would take a tumble. Then I positioned myself so that I could get a good shot on Salvador before repositioning to rinse and repeat. After a few magnum shots, he did end up chasing me, but I was able to use the TMP and shotgun to stun lock him whilst dealing a fair bit of damage. After that, I brought him into this room to hit him with this explosive pottery and in dramatic fashion, he got scared and tried running away. Fortunately for me, he smacked his forehead on the doorframe and I was able to deal the final blows and watch his oversized body writhe in pain before picking up the dynamite he had confiscated. I think this section ahead of the fact that there is an actual second boss fight here, ridiculous. Moving on, I blew up the blocked path, watched Luis do a silly little jog and proceeded into the double gigante fight. Now, this fight isn't usually too tough. I did just plan on dunking them in the lava, but the modder had actually removed the system to drop the floor. So we were gonna have to fight these guys without cheesing somehow. Not only that, but the area was now also filling with ganados and I was very quickly losing hope. Amidst trying to clear out some of the ganados before handling the gigantes, I essentially got stun locked into losing almost all of my health. So I decided to restart the checkpoint and come at it from a different approach. I was grabbed by this gigante, so I took the opportunity to hit him with the magnum and then shoot at his exposed Plagas too. I then took care of a few more ganados, got kicked in the face and got a nice kiss from the spider thing. And with a slither of health and no healing items in sight, this gigante just about caught me when I thought he was going to stop chewing his arms and ended up chewing my head off. Man. The first stage of grief, denial. This couldn't be happening. There was no way I was actually struggling. I mean, I wasn't even trying my hardest. I just needed to walk in, focus up. It wasn't even hard. There weren't, there weren't that many enemies. I, I just... I tried time and time again, and I just kept trying. I I would miss the few magnum shots I had, and I would try again. I just couldn't give up. I could not give up, not now, not when we'd made it so far. I had to keep going. I had to keep trying. There was no way I was going to let these stupid gigantes kill the run. So I did. I kept trying, and eventually, after persevering for long enough, the second Gigante had fallen. Anyways, with both Gigantes dead and all the enemies despawned, we made our way to the minecart section, which was no different and just as boring as ever. So I'll save you the time and wow, we did it. We beat the minecart section. Very impressive. Wait a minute. Why is Luis all the way over there? 
Oh, God damn it. All right. So you know how this section goes. You take a big detour around the hive to get to the elevator, then make your way up to fight Krauser and close out the chapter, right? Well, this chapter has a twist and not one that I'm very fond of. You see, the path here is now blocked off and the gate over there is now closing and oh my god, it's another boss fight. This time, we're pitted against U3 or Pesanta 3.0 or as I like to call him, the Run Killer because if you hadn't noticed, we have nothing. We have a few shotgun shells and some handgun ammo but we're trapped in an arena surrounded by constantly spawning Novistadors and an overpowered Pesanta. Not only that, but the Novistadors that camouflage themselves on the ground before you get to this area are also respawning, meaning even if you kill them, they will just come back forever until you kill Pesanta and get away. When I tell you I tried so hard to give this guy everything I had, I really did. I tried and tried, but eventually I was feeling overrun and I had to restart to really get my bearings. It was only when I restarted the checkpoint that I picked up this request and remember that you can destroy the hive to stop Novistadors from spawning. Of course, this wouldn't help with the problem we had where the camouflage novies were respawning indefinitely, but I thought it had to help with the ones flying in from the hive, so I broke all four of them and gave the Pesanta fight another shot. This time, it became glaringly obvious just how hard this fight was. I was pumping him full of shotgun shells and he wasn't even getting stunned. The TMP has the best chance to stun him from what I could tell, but even then, we didn't have anywhere near enough ammo to use it for the whole fight, so I did what I could, eventually flashbanging him and moving on to my last 10 bullets. It definitely didn't help that I was missing my shots, but even when I was hitting them, it was doing nothing. I couldn't stun him, I wasn't even sure if I was damaging him anymore, and eventually I ran out of ammo. I was softlocked, I had no knife, no ammo, and definitely no will to live either. I kept thinking back to the Gigante fight, how I didn't give up and eventually succeeded. I just knew there had to be a way forward. I knew there was something else I could do. I gave it another go, this time noticing the flamethrower, hoping it would be some sort of miracle worker. I shut down the hive, headed to the Pesanta fight, and nothing. This piece of shit fucking sucks. There is no way this wasn't given to you as a joke. I don't know what it is with flamethrowers in video games, but they're always so useless, and this is just another example of that. Regardless, I still gave it another go. I had a bit more other ammo after restarting the checkpoint and collecting more along the way, but eventually after shooting him over and over and over, I got ambushed by more and more respawning novies and one of them actually managed to slice my head clean off my body. And that was it. I was done. I couldn't do it anymore. The game had well and truly kicked my ass and to be honest, I was happy to give up. It got to a point maybe two chapters ago where I just didn't enjoy playing the game anymore. So I was actually okay with just quitting there and ending the speedrun. There was a guy who commented on one of my videos before saying they stopped watching because I lowered the difficulty in a playthrough. That guy wanted to see me suffer, but I don't think he can understand one simple thing. I fucking suck at these games. I can't do it, man. It's too hard. I wasn't even playing on the hardest difficulty for this one either. I hope he feels good about himself because I fucking don't. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't speedrun Resident Evil's hardest mod. I don't think I collected enough resources to be able to counter each boss fight properly, even despite the amount of money I had by the end. I could have maybe upgraded some weapons if I'd have known that I could only buy the rocket launcher once. And on top of that, I definitely definitely could have spent my resources a little better too. If I was to try this again, I think I could probably make it a bit further, but I would definitely need to spend a lot more time on each chapter, collecting more treasure and resources, which would kind of hinder the speedrun and turn it more into a very quick playthrough, I guess. Either way, it's over and I'm happy with how far I got. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. I like making cool shit like this for fun and I have some more cool ideas planned, so it would be nice to see you in the next one. I also plan on going live sometime soon, so if you want to see me try beating this mod without speedrunning on a harder difficulty, then let me know in the comments. Alright, thank you, that's it, goodbye, thank you, goodbye.